How's it going, ladies and gents? Welcome back to the Trinx Repair channel. As always, I'm Dan. If you're new to the channel, huge hello. Now, super quick video for you today. I've just got a couple of random jobs that I wanted to show you. We're also doing a quick q and A. I hit you guys on the Instagram and YouTube to throw some questions my way and you guys did not disappoint. So I'm gonna be answering your questions, looking at these pretty unique shoes. So let's get into it. So once again, welcome back guys. Hope you're all doing fantastic. So like I said, doing a Q&A, I always get a bit mixed up. I never know when to do the Q&A at the end or the beginning or in the middle. We'll see how it goes, but I know for sure we can look at the uh, the jobs first. So first job, we've got these gents, Louboutins, and they obviously are completely knackered on the sole. So they need a new mirror sole and some TLC. But what I'm excited about, we got these, these stripper boots, which I'm gonna be wearing later. So I've done loads of these for the girls already. They are, it's a hell of a platform on it, isn't it? Um, they're rubber, sticky rubber on the bottom, and we're gonna put shoulder lever on the bottom so that it slides better across the carpet. They're not stripper boots. They are, for the girls down the road, they do sort of like pole, pole workouts, pole classes, and when they're doing their stunts and stuff, they need it to slide around. So let's get started. Oh, okay, guys, I need to wake up. So first thing I'm gonna talk about is the lubes. You'll have seen this before. We're putting on the Caselli Mirasol, which is extremely popular. Loads of people are coming in to have these done and it's gonna go right over there, cover up all the mess. Now, something that I ask every customer when they come in is how do they feel about the Louboutin logo? Because some people really don't like to have it covered up. However, in this instance, there are scuff marks on it. It's dirty, it's dented, it's creased. So if we leave it exposed, it's, it's still gonna look like that, knackered. So in this instance, the customer has agreed that it's better for us to cover it so that it all looks fresh and smart. Now, I know a lot of you guys get extremely triggered by that, but uh, as I said, it's the customer's decision. If you have a triggered issue, here's a triggered tissue. Oh man, I cracked myself up. But if you really do feel the need to tell me what a awful person I am, there is a convenient comment section just below, just for you. Oh no! So first things first, I'm just gonna clean up whatever's left of the sole best I can before we start getting to work. So what we're gonna do is just take a blade and cut a perfectly straight score line, ready to make our graft for the new sole. Okay, so at the machine for the sanding, let me tell you what we're doing in case you haven't heard already. The red on the original shoes is just paint, okay? And it peels off and that's why it wears out so quick. And that's why we're replacing it with the Caselli mirror soles because they're rubber. It lasts that much longer, but we have to sand the leather sole, same as anything, so that the glue has a decent surface to stick to. Um, normally we would use the light sanding band on the ladies' shoes because they're much more delicate, but the gents one is a thick leather sole so we can just whack it on the rough band. Okay, so everything's prepped, everything's sanded, and we're gonna glue all four sides. So the original shoe, the leather, and the new soles. So let's get sticky. Oh, hang on. Uh, one of you guys was really disappointed that I didn't play the let's get sticky music in a previous video. So this one's for you, big guy. Okay, so while that's all drying, I think it's a perfect time to jump into some questions. Okay, so Q&A, you guys sent me some questions on Instagram and on YouTube, and you did not disappoint, had well over 100 questions. Unfortunately, I can't answer all of them, but I've got about 15 or 20 here, some about shoes, some about my personal life, so it should be a bit of fun. Let's see what we got. I'm gonna have a quick fire round because you guys hit me with some last minute bangers on Instagram. Mr. Lee says, how did you get into the profession? Was there any pressure? Um, I'm gonna answer the first bit in another question, but was there any pressure? I do remember 
when I was a kid, um, most of us actually, when we started working on the shoe repair machines, especially the stitches, there was always a bit of stitch of fear because they can be a bit of a beast and things went wrong uh, when you were a little bit inexperienced, didn't know what you're doing. So yeah, there was pressure in that regard. Jenaba, Jenaba, I hope I'm getting your name right, says, would you ever release your own brand of shoe? I don't think so. Um, it's actually kind of a world away from what I do. I do like coming up with things. I have actually made my own brand of candle. Let me grab one for you. This guy I was gonna show you in another video, but this is the Cobbler Shop. So it's our own signature candle. I wanted to try and make a candle that smelt like the Cobbler Shop. It's so, so difficult, but this ended up being just a real nice blend of uh, Tuscan leather and musk. If you wanna grab one, the Cobbler Shop candle, they're on the online shop, just right on the homepage. They are made locally, hand poured, just down the road with premium ingredients. So grab one if you fancy it. Mike Comerford, when did your dad build his jet bus? So if you guys haven't seen, uh, my dad has got a Volkswagen camper van with a 5,000 horsepower jet engine on the back. It's awesome. I'll put a link down to his channel just below. Give him some subscribers. He's really trying to build up his channel. So he built it about 10 years ago, actually, a long while ago. The original camper van came from Oklahoma. He got the jet engine on eBay and then spent several years learning about jet engines and reconditioning and such. And it's named Oklahoma Willie. So he takes it to shows all the time. He's currently uh, driven all the way to Belgium for a show. And then something really fantastic, he's taking it to the Austrian Grand Prix. So if you're watching the Austrian Grand Prix, you're gonna see Oklahoma Willy, you're gonna see my dad with a jet bus, firing off his flame and showing everyone his Willy. Next, horse, Mr. Horse, what's the worst job you've done? I'm a chef, I've been there. I feel you, buddy. So I would probably say just in general, the things that I don't like is when you take a job in, you do a favor for someone, give them some discount, and then you really regret undercharging and you're doing a lot of work for not a lot of money. That just really gets to me. But in terms of horrible stuff, every once in a while, not as often as you'd think, probably maybe once a year, we get a really smelly pair of shoes in and obviously no one's gonna like working on them. And sometimes I do watch batteries, somebody will bring in a watch and they haven't taken it off for about a year and all under the strap, there's all dead skin and that's no fun. Peter says, is my car wrapped or factory color? That's a original color, man. That's an original color from the 70s. So they've stayed true to their roots with the colors of the new challenges. It's called Plum Crazy. Ryan says, just starting my own business. How are you finding it? Worth it? Well, first of all, good for you, man. And I'm answering another question like this in a minute. So I'll be brief here. I don't think being employed or self-employed is better one way or another. There's lots of fantastic jobs out there and lots of people are having fantastic livings being self-employed. I think it comes down to your personality. If you're more entrepreneurial, you're okay generating ideas and being accountable for your own success. If you don't put the work in, it's not gonna happen. But if you're that sort of person, sort of person yeah, it's extremely rewarding. Tammy says, what's the hardest job you ever completed and would you ever do it again? Uh, when we're talking about hard stuff, the first things that spring to mind are things outside of work. Uh, but I'll tell you one work job that we did have a year or so ago, we repaired about 30 pairs of military boots that all needed the metal horseshoes on in about two days time. So that was just a hell of a lot of elbow grease. And I would probably do it again because we charged well for it. But I do want to say just in terms of hard stuff, it's always been physical endeavors. Um, you know, I've competed in a couple of strongman competitions and they're just, they're just absolutely brutal, really physically, uh, cardiovascularly and mentally challenging. And second to that, I would say playing a full game of American football, it's, it's just brutal. Janice says, what's your dream shoe to own? Uh, what is the most bizarre request I've had from a customer? I've always wanted a pair of cowboy boots, I've never had a pair of cowboy boots, you know, they're not exactly that popular here in the UK. And uh, bizarre requests, I'd say, unique jobs. I had somebody bring in a tank shell once, a spent round from a tank shell, you know, so it was just this big brass cylinder and they wanted it polishing up. So that was pretty cool. And if anyone wants to send me some cowboy boots, you know the address. Right, next, Jennifer, where would I like to travel to next? Some of that's always been on my list is Mexico. I really want to go and see the Mayan temples. LG says, best achievement so far. Um, I'll give you two. So the first Straight away is when I won my first bodybuilding competition, first place, because I had placed second before a couple of times and third and even sort of second and third at nationals, but I'd never won. And the first time I won my first show, first place, I was just ecstatic. And of course you put in so much work to these things to finally pay off in the best way possible first place. It's just a feeling you can't comprehend. 
And then of course you get to stand in the middle and get your picture taken, and give it all this and one of these and that. I said I was gonna give you two, didn't I? And that is uh, my YouTube journey as a whole. Of course, I've been extremely lucky with how the channel's blown up, but also uh, as far as achievement goes, it's the fact that I've been able to reach so many people, you guys, and I've had so much positive feedback from a lot of people saying how I've influenced their lives and, and I never say I was being an influencer whatsoever, but I've had so much feedback saying that I've helped people or just encouraged them to try something new or even just, you know, spread a bit of entertainment. It's just fantastic. Okay, next question was from my mate, Mark Guest. You guys know Mark from down the gym. He's been on the channel here before. How do you deal with trolls and negative comments? And I love this question. So Mark has his own channel and we've both been victims of trolling um believe it or not i've had hundreds of negative comments on the channel over the years and mark mark bless him he, he went as far as deleting his old channel just in you know in a moment of fury i believe he was so damn angry so it's a thing it's a problem it does affect people so what advice could i give to anybody so you guys will be starting youtube channels some of you just instagram and stuff and you're gonna get trolls too so maybe i can help you with some advice I think the first thing to think about is why do we take trolling so personally? And I think a lot of it is psychological and, and subconscious, and that's because we perceive it as a threat. And I'll bear with me. Um, so imagine, what's the best way to explain this? Say somebody punches you in real life, that causes you harm. So if somebody just says, I'm going to punch you, all of a sudden you're on alert for, ah, oh, damn, am I gonna get punched? This is gonna hurt. And it, ha it works just the same with words. If someone says, I'm going to say something really horrible about you, all of a sudden you're worried that your reputation or your standing in society is gonna be affected. You know, just rumors, gossip. And I think that's why we take it more personally because it's perceived as a threat. You can have all the positive comments in the world. They don't have a huge bearing on you, but something that's a threat could affect you in a bad way. And why do people do it? It's usually people that are insecure and bitter. They hate to see anybody doing well, especially if they've not got anything going on with their life. So they like to try and bring people down to make themselves feel better about themselves. But I think if you can kind of understand these people are not necessarily the happiest people, it's helpful to um, you know not get too angry about it. And something I'll add is happy people don't feel the need to bring other people down. And certainly successful people don't feel the need to bring other people down. They're too busy doing their own thing. Imagine someone like Tom Cruise. Do you really think Tom Cruise would be going through his comments and someone's like, oh, I thought, Top Gun was really crap, and he's right back there straight away going, yeah, well, you smell. And I kind of skipped over a point, and the point was that little voice in your head saying that it's a threat. Realize it's not a threat, it's just a comment, and just ignore it. It's best to not even reply sometimes. Martin Keane, he says, do you get more online orders or walk-in jobs through the door? And somebody else also asked, has my uh, business increased since starting YouTube? So I'll answer both. So quick answer, I'll get way more walk-in jobs through the door. Online orders, we only do about, uh, sometimes as little as three, three to six pairs a week. They're usually the bigger jobs though, come through walk-in jobs, however, will be I say on average about 70 pairs a week. And a lot of the walk-in jobs are from YouTube. So to answer the other question, yes, business has definitely picked up. This shop's always been extremely busy. Um, and now of course you can imagine it is so busy. We're at the point where we're bringing on staff soon. But of course, that's a fantastic thing. Uh, yeah, YouTube is just the gift that keeps on giving. So this guy's called Unlucky Disclaimer. He goes, how fast have you been in the Challenger? I can't tell you that, because I'll get arrested. What I can tell you is what she's done at the drag strip. If you guys don't know, we're talking about a Dodge Challenger Hellcat. Uh, so she's a real drag car, and I've been desperate to make a video of doing some drag racing up at Santa Pod, the local drag strip. But I can tell you what she's done. She did a 12 second quarter mile at 135 miles an hour which might sound okay, but that was with a ton of wheel spin. She really needs proper drag tires to put the power down, hook up to the track. And then she got a lot faster. I'm almost certain she would do a sub 11 second quarter mile and that would be at about 140, 145. But uh, if she had room to spread her legs, I could tell you for a fact that she would easily do 180. I mean, it's rated at 200, but uh, you'd need some serious bottle to do that. Wyatt A goes, max shoulder press. Yes, let's keep the gym questions going. Um, there's all sorts of shoulder presses we could talk about in the gym, um, but I can tell you something that I was always very proud of was this is a while ago now, I managed to train my way up to a um, body weight strict press. So this is where you're standing perfectly still and you're just doing a strict barbell press with your body weight. And that was when I was lighter, I weighed 80 kilos and it was an 80 kilo press. Okay, so there's a few questions out of the way. I think the glue's probably dry by now, so let's get back to the shoes. So, 
It's a bit of a mess out here, but this is where I keep the shoulder leather. So what we found is this shoulder leather is not only is it really flexible, but on the bottom surface is uh, just the right sort of finish that makes it really slippery. I mean, this is such a simple job. We're literally just uh, drawing some outlines of material and gluing it on. Okay, so back to the lubes, heat gun, gonna heat up the glue to activate it and get our new Caselli mirror sole on. In the toaster. Someone asked me, oh, sorry, I forget your name. Uh, does it annoy me that my last wobbles around and isn't bolted to the floor? I like it because slide it around to where I want it. And as for wobbling, I know exactly what's happening when the shoe's on the last and wobble or not, I've got a solid surface to hammer against. I mean, I support it with my hand as I'm working so I can get it where I want it. Watch out, he's wobbling. So round two of questions, let's see what we've got. Uh, Lucas says, do you find any time to check out any other cobblers on YouTube? Um, I mean, we've got Steve at Beedo's Leatherworks and Trenton and Heath and myself are probably the three biggest shoe repair channels on YouTube. Um, and I've watched loads of those guys stuff. I uh, certainly learned a lot from Steve, shout out to Steve. And I spoke to Trenton and Heath about a potential collab, but that's maybe a way down the line in the pipeline. But I think I'm the same as a lot of other YouTubers is that we're very busy working on our own stuff that we don't typically watch a lot of other people's YouTube content. Um, I will say when I do watch YouTube, I watch more uh, science-based stuff, podcasts, psychology, things like that, because I'm very interested in learning things I don't know, of course. I know about shoe repairs and such. Okay, where we're up to? Initial D says, only fans, question mark. I'll tell you exactly how I feel about only fans in just one line. And that is, you can line your pockets, but you can't buy back your soul. <laughs> Next, we got Rob with two Bs. Why doesn't anyone, <laughs> I'll remember this one. Why doesn't anyone sell shoes for people with only one foot? Seems like discrimination. <laughs> is this a serious question, Rob? <laughs> I mean, Google it, maybe they do, but I'd imagine there's an extremely limited market for that. Wayne Bird says, do you have a favorite brand of shoes to work on? Do I prefer gents or ladies shoes? Uh, yeah, this is an easy one. Ladies shoes, I don't like working on. Don't worry, I do a good job on them, but the high-end shoes can be a bit of a nightmare to work on. 180 for gents shoes, typically the more expensive, a gents shoe is the nicer it is to work on. The cheap stuff uh, can be a nightmare to work on. It just doesn't come apart very well. It can be made of cheap stuff that really um, comes up with a lot of fumes when you sand it on the sanding belt. But as for brands, uh, Barker's churches are always a pleasure to work on. John Lobb's uh, Lokes are not bad, but what sticks out in my head, sure, is that every time you get a pair of churches or Barker's, it's just like, wow, this is really easy to work on. All right, gang, so let's get back to the shoes. So uh, soles are on, both of our pairs. What we need to do now is start finishing around them, trimming them around, and then uh, finishing the edges with some ink and polish.
round three of questions. Do you know, one of my most trolled comments is, can't you pronounce your THs when I say something like free? Of course I can, it's called an accent. Ready, ready? Free. <laughs> oh man, you guys, right, what have we got? Deep J, how about you take us for a drive around Tring and what do you think of Daniel Day-Lewis being a cobbler or training for one as a role? Um, Joe, I love that idea of going for a drive around Tring. I'm always looking for excuses to do vlog style stuff, uh, just different topics outside the shop. And uh, I've been thinking of going up and down the high street, showing you some of the different shops, my neighbors, so maybe I'll do that or a drive. That's sort of the Daniel Day-Lewis thing. I've heard this a few times, and to be honest, I don't know. I haven't got the foggiest what it's about. Some people say that he is Daniel Day-Lewis, the actor. Some people say he's a cobbler in Paris. Also, I don't believe that. I'm sure he's far too busy being a A-list actor. Um, but if anybody can shed some light on what that's regarding, drop it down in the comments. I'm sure a lot of people will be interested to know, including me. Julian says, what's next for you? Any side hustles going on? Thanks for question, Julian. Um, immediately what springs to mind is bodybuilding. So you'll have heard me speak about bodybuilding many times, how I used to do it in the past. And it's been five years since I actually competed, stepped on stage. Um, I didn't intend on it being that long a break, but you know, COVID, I had some injuries. Uh, I got into American football. So my interest for bodybuilding just kind of dwindled for a, a little while, uh, but now I've got a huge wave of motivation to get back into it. And uh, your interest to compete in bodybuilding, you really have to be interested in it because you have to dedicate a lot of your life to being in the gym and um, paying attention to what you're eating. It's not necessarily boring eating, but say for when you're trying to bulk up, build muscle, you have to make sure you're eating enough. You kind of have to track what you're eating. So there's a lot to it. You definitely have to be have some passion for it to do it. It doesn't just happen by itself. And also I am buying my first house, you know, fingers crossed. Um, but that's happening imminently in the next uh, month, two or three months. I'm basically shopping around at the minute. So it's a hugely exciting time in my life. I've been saving up for a long time for a house, like many single people in the UK. It takes it takes some doing. Next, we got Fexalicious. I circled this one because you had three questions, which I thought was pretty greedy. I was thinking about banning her, guys. But to be honest, uh, we spoke before and these questions are all heavy hitters. So I'm going to give you three questions. The first is favorite and then most challenging part of running your own business. So I'm gonna start with most challenging because that's what's popped to my head straight away, probably because I find it challenging every day. And that is motivation and discipline. I'll, be, I'll say discipline more because motivation is more when you, you enjoy doing something, it's the discipline side of it. When you're running a company, especially if you're the only person, as I am, for now, you're in charge of everything, you're accountable for everything. So if you don't get up in the morning, Nobody's there to run the shop. If you don't order stock, there's no stock. If you don't smile and be polite to customers, your business is gonna tank. So just to do all of these things, you've gotta be a bit switched on. You've gotta remind yourself to actually just get up and do the things that need doing. Um, that's probably what I find the most challenging about thing about running your own business. You know, I remember when I was employed, there's definitely something to be said about having a boss that just tells you what to do. All you've gotta do is do what you're told. It's a hell of a lot more luxurious than uh, having to be accountable for everything yourself. But on the flip side of that, what I enjoy the most about running my own business is uh, probably just the opposite of all that stuff I said. Uh, the success of the business is dependent on exactly how much work you put in and it's an extension of your personality. You know, you're out there in the world making a name for yourself and I'm very entrepreneurial. So of course that, uh, you know, being self-employed gives me the freedom to try different ideas. YouTube, perfect example. I wouldn't be here today uh, doing the YouTube channel if I wasn't self-employed. So this is probably the biggest thing that I enjoy about it. And next she goes, what was your favorite custom shoe repair? Easy and super recent. You guys must have seen the crocodile repair we did in the last video. That was just awesome. Um, somebody else said, I'm not sure if I had it written down. Sorry, they said, um, what was my favorite shoe repair? That one too, uh, when I was finished with it, I remember genuinely thinking, um, feeling quite proud. I was like, this is the best shoe repair I feel like I've done. You know, it had the eyes and just being crocodile skin. Uh, I've never had a crocodile skin pair of shoes come in and it was just awesome to be able to work on them. And lastly was, how do you balance work life and fitness so well? I think we've touched on this already, but it's a balancing act to be honest, a tightrope walk. And what I can tell you is by the end of the day, I don't have a lot of energy left. So I guess just some things to say is I cram a lot in, I'll work, I'll go to the gym if I see friends and I don't end up getting home till relatively late, sort of 8 p.m., 9 p.m. Um, so I get a lot crammed into the hours that I have. 
but what I can tell you, maybe give some of you guys some advice if you are trying to do more, is to get a sense for when to hit the gas and when to come off the gas. You know, if you feel full of energy, if it's a good time, you're having a good week, then that's when you can put more effort into it, more energy, smash your goals, take care of business. And if you're feeling run down and knackered, it's okay to step back take a step back, you know, it's okay to take a night off the gym. Don't listen to those people that say, oh, you're, you're a loser for slacking. If you need a day off, take a day off and then you can come back fresher and hit it hard again the following week. So that's it for Fexalicious's questions. You lucky thing, you got three. I'm crossing out my questions as I go. But for now, let's get back to the shoes, do some TLC. So just before we clean up the uppers, gonna clean off some of the excess ink off the new Caselli sole. So, uh, as always, using the Saphir Gentle Cleanser. Works as a wonderful soul cleaner. Beautiful. Okay, so there's our Gents Lube with its new Caselli Mirror Sole on. I hope you guys can see all right. It's so sunny here at the minute and pretty hot, but we're gonna give the uppers some TLC with the Saphir 1925 Nadal Door nourishing and conditioning cream. So these are a little discolored, so this is just gonna put some new color pigment back into those faded areas. Okay, so it's buffed off and now we're gonna apply a layer of wax polish just to really make it pop and shine. So of course using the Saphir Medal Door. Another thing that uh, <laughs> some of you guys like to get triggered about, it's the Kiwi Bunch really don't like me talking about Saphir. Kiwi's fine. I like Kiwi. It just appears to be that Saphir's better. But just in case, here's the triggered tissue. So I like to just apply it with fingers. It helps sort of melt it into the leather a bit better. And then once the wax has dried and hardened, I'm going to shine it off with my secret cloth. Now remember guys, if you want any shoe care products, so if you want to specifically find Saphir, check out our website, trinkshoerepairs.com, as we are an official Saphir stockist, and you can find other creams, polishes, brushes, there's loads on there, so go check it out. I'll put a link up here for you. Something I need to try and do is there are water stains on the uppers. You see that little light patch there? To be fair, the other shoe was much worse, but I've already done it. So we need to try and dye those. So we're using some Thebing's British Tan, the tiniest amount, and try and blend it in. And this is gonna just hopefully disguise those watermarks a little bit. Just a touch more of the cream over the dye. Blend everything together. So there we go. And uh, I wish I kind of showed you the uh, water stains on the other one because it's gone quite well. Not perfect, but it's a hell of a lot better. To be honest, I think it was some sort of oil, but that is our job done on our lubes. So let's get back to the last few questions. Okay, last few questions then. I'm gonna call it a day. I feel like this video is getting quite long. Duffy is back, says, I live 70 miles away. Do I make an appointment for sure repairs or just walk in? Just turn up, man. Um, you can walk in. The only catch is the wait for repairs is about five days at the minute, so you will have to leave it with us. Or alternatively, we do mail order, just post them in. Richard Madden says, any negative experience with customers? Loads. <laughs> I shouldn't say loads, it makes me sound bad. But um, any business you're in, any walk of life you're in, you are always going to get bad customers. Even if you do a job perfectly, even if you serve them extremely politely, you're always gonna get arseholes, excuse my French, that just are out there to ruin people's day. I had one very recently, came in with a pair of shoes and had no clue what he wanted doing to them. Couldn't tell me what he wanted doing to them at all. Just very rough, vague ideas. So I met him halfway, gave him some suggestions, said I could do this, I could do that. Is that the sort of thing you're after? Came to an agreement. Customer collected them a week later, said he was happy with the job, paid for the job, and left, no complaint. A few days later, I receive a really negative review on Google 
saying, you know, all sorts, saying, um, you know, didn't do what you asked me to do, put cheap soles on, they weren't stitched on, you know, just like, you know, nitpicking all this stuff, which was all inaccurate and wrong. And more to the point, you know, wasn't what we discussed and wasn't what we agreed. <laughs> you know, so you can't win sometimes is what I'm trying to say. Anyway, let's move on and winding myself up. Sean Flynn, do I prefer front squats or back squats? Yes, another gym question. Front squats or back squats, for those of you guys who don't know, we're talking about when you do a squat with your legs up and down in the gym, where do you put the bar? It's either resting on your back, this will be a back squat, or you're holding it in front of you, resting on the front of your shoulders, that'll be a front squat. For me, front squats 100%, one of my favorite lifts. Um, the main differences between a front squat and a back squat, uh, they target your quads, the front of your legs more, rather than your glutes and your back, um, and it also works your core, and your, your core stability in your upper back. So that's a reason I really love front squats. And no one ever does them in the gym, so it makes you look like a badass when you knock out some heavy reps. Okay, Elk says, how do you make a mirror shine not foggy on black shoes? Uh, it just sounds like you haven't polished them enough or there's too much wax on it. Um, a mirror shine can look a bit foggy when you just start polishing it. So I would say number one, keep going, polish it for, you know, considerably longer than you have been, and slowly that shine starts to develop and build up and become brighter and brighter. Uh, secondly, you may just not have nearly enough wax as you need on it. You, you have to, when you're doing a mirror shine, you're not polishing the shoe, you're polishing a surface of wax. So imagine that that layer of wax has to be thick enough so that you can actually polish it. Rob404 says, do you ever job share with the elf in the window? He's talking about George, who you see in the intros. Any chance of advancement? Let me tell you something about George. Lovely chap, everybody loves him, but he's been trying to hit that same nail for about four years now, and he still hasn't got it in, so I'm not gonna trust him with anything. Ritty G says, how did you, a lot of you guys asked this, how did you start out and what led you to this career choice? Now, I have spoke about this on the channel before, the little story of my background, but uh, there are probably about 100,000 of you new guys here, so I better tell it again. Straight out of school, I had no idea what I wanted to do or what I was doing. Actually, me and my best friend Tom were in a, a band, a rock band. It was just us two. I should just do a quick little shout out to Tom. Uh, as I say, he's my best friend. We've known each other since we're two years old. He's getting married next year to a beautiful girl called Penny in South Africa, and he asked me to be his best man, or joint best man, along with his other friend Chris. So uh, it's a huge honor, and I love you, man. So me and Tom thought we were gonna be rock stars, didn't want a job, told my dad I'm not gonna get a job, gonna be a rock star. And he quickly set me straight, so you're not gonna be a rock star, you're gonna fix shoes. And I started working for Timpson, the um, chain company here in the UK. I should say the second part of this question, or rather from somebody else was, uh, is the shop a family business or does the, the, the trade run in the family? So yes and no. Um, my dad used to be a shoe repairer in the family, but the shop I actually brought off of somebody else. So I started working at Timpson. I was there for about six years. And as a kid, I really didn't enjoy the job. You might be surprised to know. It took me a while until probably I was in my mid twenties that I really started to develop more of a entrepreneurial spirit and have a, a mind for business. And then it was 10 years ago that I opened my first shop in Leighton Buzzard and really started coming into my own and, you know, pushing the business in different directions. And it was four years ago, almost today, that I moved into Tring. Uh, I'm gonna do some sort of Tring birthday special, I think. And of course, YouTube is a huge part of my business, which is now two years down the line. Anyway, that will do for Q&A. I think we've done enough. Now, do let me know if you enjoyed the Q&A. I rarely do them, so it's good feedback for me. Let me know what you think. Uh, let's have a look at the finished job. So there's our lubes with our Caselli soles, and of course, tidied up the uppers and our Stripper boots. They're so cool, aren't they? Just with their slippy leather on the bottom. So that is it, guys. That is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed listening to me ramble on about stuff. Like I said, let me know if you like it. And I will just say before I finish, I've said this before, but um, as I said, I'm in my sort of big journey towards bodybuilding again. I'll pin a comment and you can like it to let me know if you want to see some of the gym stuff and follow me on my bodybuilding journey because that's potentially some other cool videos that I can do. But make sure to hit like if you like the video, subscribe if you happen to be new, I'm doing new videos all the time. I've actually got something very exciting coming up. I'll give you one clue, Kingsman. And I can't say any more, but I promise you're gonna love it. So once again, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.